Welcome to Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. My name is Matt. I'm from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and today we have a full ship tour of Odyssey of the Seas of all the cool things you can see, do, eat, explore, and even eat some more on this amazing ship. Here we go. Welcome aboard Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. This is the fifth Quantum class ship. Technically, it's a Quantum Ultra class ship. All that really means is it has some enhancements and some minor differences you might notice from some other Quantum class ships, but it's a lot of fun. And we're going to start up here on the top deck, the pool deck of Odyssey of the Seas. And this has the Caribbean resort style feel that Royal Caribbean has been putting on all the ships now. So there is pools, hot tubs. The casitas do have an extra cost to them. You rent them for the day and the prices will vary depending if it's a sea day or a port day, but you can rent those if you so choose. There's also Splash Away Bay, which is the kids' splash area for children on Odyssey of the Seas. There's water slides, sprinklers, things that make you get really, really wet, and it's a lot of fun for kids of all ages. You know, it's something to do, basically, rather than just wade in the pool. It's something to really enjoy it. But the pool deck is a beautiful space. Lots of room, lots of places to sit, and I love the seating, especially in the shade. I'm not the sun worshiper, maybe some of you are, but I do enjoy being able to get out there and have a, the ocean breeze, but enjoy the view. And of course, the pool is massive. There's actually two pools and a solarium. So one big difference with Odyssey of the Seas compared to other quantum class ships is what used to be the indoor pool is now another outdoor pool. So you've got two outdoor pools that anybody of any age can use. And in addition, the solarium, which we'll get to in a little bit, that's for adults only. Of course, there's also some DJ music and live bands as well. And we can't forget the sprinkles, the free ice cream, frozen yogurt, whatever you want to call it. It's free, it's available, and you can get it anytime you want here up at the pool deck during the daytime. It's fantastic. It's just, you know, where else are you going to go to get something to eat, right? Love it. Uh, the lime and coconut also is part of the bar area, and you're going to find actually some swim vests you can use nearby as well. There's the towels where you can get your towel station. Get these anytime you want. Exchange them. Hi. You can bring towels back at new ones. Uh, just make sure you bring them all back before the end of the cruise. Otherwise, Royal Caribbean hits you with a fee for unreturned towels. So just make sure you bring it back before the end of the cruise. And what I really like about the pool deck, again, is just how many views they have. It's very open. It's kind of like one of those home renovation shows where when they knock down a couple walls, all of a sudden it feels so open. You hear them say, well, this is kind of what happened here on Odyssey of the Seas as well. I love the flow of it. Now, it's been about two seconds since we've talked about food, so let's talk about more food. El Loco Fresh, the complimentary Mexican restaurant tacos, nachos, burritos, quesadillas. Yeah, I can read too. And there's great food, actually. What I love about this is you get, you know, maybe a taco, maybe a burrito. That's cool. You know, they're, they're nice. But then you take them to the Fixins Bar and make them even better. You get to customize it the way you want. There's pre-configured tacos and burritos, or you can make your own. Take a tortilla, fill it with whatever you like, that cheese stuff, beans me it's really customizable and that's what makes it so so good because you make it exactly the way that you like them. my kids love these cheese quesadillas because they could just eat them like all day long and there's outdoor seating here and again this is on the pool deck so what's great about it is if you're already at the pool and you want something quick to eat this is a really convenient option and again the fixins bar is really really good you just put on as much as you want in my opinion lots of guac lots of pico de gallo so so good it's amazing and yeah there are chips actually you can dip as well so you can either eat it here or bring it back to your chair so here's the lime and coconut so this is the bar area previously on other royal green cruise ships it might be known as the pool bar or the sky bar but the lime and coconut is a multi-deck venue that's really baked into the design of the pool deck and it's got that again that caribbean resort vibe to it it's got bright colors, its own special menu of drinks as well. Goombay Smash is a fantastic choice, and they got a lot of other drinks you can try. In fact, if you have the Royal Caribbean drink package, which works here in all the bars on board the ship, you can really try all the drinks on the menu, and it's a great fun and lots of choices here to enjoy and very convenient to the pool as well. So feel free to grab a drink. And uh, if you also want another recommendation for a classic pool drink, my favorite is the Lava Flow with Kraken Rum. I think I'll probably say this in every single tour video we do, but it's so worth mentioning. It's my favorite. Make sure you ask for the Kraken Rum there. But nothing beats a sunny day, cold drink, and you at the pool instead of at work, right? Love it. As I mentioned earlier, the casitas do cost extra. So if you do get one, this is where you check in for them on deck 15 in order to get your spot reserved. And there's more details about the casitas and how much they cost and all those details at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Up one more deck here on the next deck up, we actually have the upper portion of the lime and coconut. This is the old sky bar, if you will, on other ships. And this has a much better view up here. More of an ocean breeze is also nearby. 
the check-in area for the North Star. We'll get that in a second. But if you're looking for you know more ocean breeze and you want some views of the pool deck, this is a great spot. What I like about this also, it's not just chairs all around. They've really stylized this nicely so you can be comfortable while you sit and have a drink. And it's a great spot for sail away as well. In fact, there's lots of great spots for sail away on Odyssey of the Seas. This is definitely one of them because you've got a great vantage point. We mentioned earlier the North Star. Here it is. This is the observational capsule that can take you over 300 feet up in the air. It's available during your cruise on either port days or sea days, although it may have a cost to it if you do it on the sea days. But as advertised, you go in here. It's a capsule. It takes you slowly up to the very, very top, and you get some amazing views of the ship and the areas around you as well. I would say there's a good reason to do that while you're in port because it's a little more to look at rather than the open ocean, but it's really beautiful. And depending on the configuration, sometimes you'll actually go over the side of the ship, but it's just, it's like having your own little drone, right? Except you're there, it is air conditioned and it is socially distanced as well. And you can take photos of it. So highly recommend that as well. It's, it's one of these things you have to do on a quantum class ship. Make sure you sign up for spots early on when you first get on board because they do go very, very quickly for the North Star. It's a very popular option and very limited capacity. So it will sell out. Make sure you get reservations ahead of time. On the top pool deck as well, you've got some wonderful seating here uh, not just chairs again what i love about royal caribbean recently is their attention to bring more types of seating more comfortable things and here are those casitas again they all have different names and if you rent one your name gets on there as well so everyone will know that's your casita and it's reserved for you something else really cool about this top pool deck are these see-through spas yeah the hot tubs actually have the glass barrier which you can actually see through how cool is that uh, I, I, it's neat i like it i think it's fun and it's a hot tub and i love that they're adding hot tubs to this deck because usually they don't have that Next up is the Sweet Sun Deck. So if you're staying at a Grand Suite or higher, sorry, no Junior Suite guests allowed, you actually get a special area just for you. Your C Pass card gets you in here, and then it's reserved seating just for you in here. And what I like about it, this area as well is not only is it reserved for Suite guests, but there's some shade here that's provided by this structure, if you will. And I prefer the shade, quite frankly, personally. So it's nice to have that if you're looking for some of the shade up there. All right, let's hit up the Solarium. This is the adults-only pool area on Odyssey of the Seas. Every Royal Caribbean ship has a solarium area. So this is for guests 16 years and older. Don't worry, your kids can walk through this area if you're going from point A to point B, or maybe going into the uh, Solarium Bistro restaurant, but you know they can't actually hang out here or go in the pool here. And I think the solarium on quantum class ships are the most beautiful ones of any Royal Caribbean ship out there. They're multi-story, there's little pools, there's big pools, there's wading pools. It really helps spread out crowds a lot more, and I think it's just pretty to look at. I mean, how cool is this, right? There's tons of seating in the solarium and for sunsets. Wow, what a great space. This is also another great space for sail away. If you're thinking about going somewhere for sail away, make sure you check out the solarium because there's some great views out here all around you. It's at the front of the ship, so and boy, what better spot. Well, I can think of one better spot. We'll get to that in a second for sail away. But the solarium is where a lot of people love to go for that adult-only vibe during sea days and anytime they just want to go up to the pool deck and again i love the comfortable seating lots of choices in fact royal Caribbean has added a lot of seating to the slam it's a massive space so if you're looking for a great space to sit down this is it also of course it wouldn't be slam without the bar here this is the sunshine bar which is the bar just for solarium guests and you come in here and just like any other bar they've got drinks available for you to enjoy you've already heard some of my other drink recommendations but i'll give you one more and that is going to be a miami vice if you like a nice fruity drink that's a great one for you now right here you're gonna also see the solarium bistro the solarium bistro is one of the complimentary restaurants and i'm gonna tell you this right now most people have no idea it exists it's open for breakfast lunch and dinner it is a hidden gem make sure you check out the solarium bistro because it is absolutely phenomenal. It is complimentary, no additional cost to dine here. And for breakfast especially, when other venues are much busier like the Windjammer or on embarkation day, no one's here. Come to the Slayer and Bistro. They've got a good selection of foods. They tend to gravitate towards Mediterranean type dishes, but don't worry, they still have some American favorites, if you will, lots of good choices to enjoy in the Solarium Bistro. I think it's a vastly underrated restaurant. And the fact that it's complimentary and most people don't know about it makes it very easy to get in and enjoy something while you're here. And if you're maybe coming back on a port day and you're looking for something easy to dine on, this is a good choice for you. Uh, make sure you check out the Solarium Bistro because it is worth your time. Also a really good option for lunches on sea days. If you're looking for something a little bit different, you can find it at the Solarium Bistro. All right, so I mentioned earlier, there's still a better sail away spot. What could it be, Matt? Well, I'm talking about the Solarium Bridge Wings. Yes, this is the spot for sail away right here on both sides of the Solarium. You can get out here and get these little bridge wings that jet out 
to the side of Odyssey of the Seas to give you unparalleled views of the ship and the area around you. It is worth your time. You should absolutely check it out because these are just phenomenal views. Again, if you're sail away on a sunset day, if you're just out there on sea, no matter when, it's always a great view. And I just love the vantage point you get here because it's one of these areas. Number one, it's kind of a secret. Most people don't know about it. But number two, boy, look at these views. I mean, you just can't beat this. Bring your camera with you as well because they're really, really nice to be out here and enjoy the unparalleled views. All right, back up to the pool deck. Let's go to the back of the ship now. Again, more great seating in the back. So don't feel like you're limited just to the pool deck. You get some really great seating back by, this is the C-plex area. We'll get in the C-plex in just a bit, but not to worry. You've got uh, some great seating out here as well. Royal Caribbean actually added these things to kind of draw people out to enjoy some of the open air that's over here. And I love the couches. This is another great secret about Odyssey of the Seas. You've got the life-size billiards table that you can kick around in. And there's a reach that, which I think is a non-approved version of a certain classic game that you may have played before, uh, but we can't talk about that. And also on Odyssey of the Seas, you have this giant artwork. So every quantum class ship has this giant animal that's on the side of the ship. On Odyssey, it is a cat who's trying to get a ball of yarn on the top. Kind of neat. And of course, it wouldn't be a roller carving ship without a rock climbing wall. Rock climbing wall is complimentary. You can try your best to get to the top of the rock wall. There's multiple paths. You can see the different colors. Those correlate to difficulty. And if you get all the way to the top, you get to ring a bell to let everybody know below you made it. And then good luck getting back down. <laughs> Next up, we've got the check-in area for Ripcord by iFly. This is a signature activity on any quantum class ship. This is a skydiving simulator. You heard this right. Skydiving simulator where you don this special suit and a helmet, and then you get in a skydiving tube and you hit it all up. Before you do that, of course, they're going to give you some basic instructions on what to do and what you need to have with you. And there's that safety seminar. It's always important to make sure you're knowing what you're doing. But this is where you go to check in and go with your group. And then when it's time, they're going to lead you up to the actual simulator itself. Let's take a walk up to Ripcord by iFly, which, by the way, if you just want to watch your friends, family go in there or just random strangers, you can do that as well. There is space for you to do that. And basically, the instructor is in there with you, as you can see, to help prep you and get you in there. But eventually, the goal is for you to be doing this by yourself. You get a couple minutes up there. Really, really nice. Also, of course, you have the Flow Rider Surf Simulator on Odyssey of the Seas, another complimentary venue for you to try your best at stand up surfing. This guy's really good. I wish I could be like this. Like, this is what I think I could do. But in reality, I would just be like this beached whale. The there we go. That's me right there. And <laughs> it's a lot of fun. A lot of people tell me I've never actually done it because I'm too scared to do it. But it's the flow rider. And the best part is you can give it a try. They also do the boogie boarding as well as the stand up surfing. There's also the sky pad on Odyssey of the Seas. Another complimentary thing to try out. This is a virtual bungee trampoline experience. Okay, so let me break this down for you. So there's trampolines that you jump on that you're strapped into. You may have seen these like in malls or something like that. But what makes this a little more fun is you actually put on a virtual reality helmet. So when you bounce, you're actually moving through a virtual world with the virtual reality helmet. Now, you don't need to put the helmet on if you don't want to, but you can as well. And there's actually one another little great little secret here, which is you can actually go up to and view people who are jumping and you have the see through deck below so you can actually see through the ocean below from up here on deck whatever this is like 16 or something man great view love it and it's another secret about odyssey of the seas you can check out for yourself it's really cool to do by the way whether or not you're actually looking at anyone in the sky pad something to do when you get up here also up on the top top deck you've got some seating again places to hang out what real company really wants you to do is have opportunities to just you know, come over here and kind of chill out and relax. You don't have to feel like you're constantly, I have to be at the pool in order to be outside. There's plenty of seating all around you. And the back sports deck offers also a place to hang out if your friends or family, maybe your kids are going to do it and you want to be nearby. This is an opportunity for you as well. Let's head into the C-Plex. The C-Plex is the indoor sports arena on Odyssey of the Seas. And it's also home to Social 180, which is the Teens Club. That's what they call the Teens Club because it's really cool and hip and unlike me. And you can access it right here by the C-Plex area. So in the C-Plex, it's a multi-use area. Sometimes they're doing volleyball, as you can see. There's soccer, there's ping pong, there is pickleball, there is bumper cars. Yes, you heard right, bumper cars. There's a giant sign you can see there as well. If you don't believe me, there they are, the bumper cars. How cool is that? You can do this on board. It's all complimentary and super fun. Nothing better than just smashing into some random stranger you don't have any idea who they are, but you'll see them later in the buffet and be like, hey, it's the guy who hit me in the bumper cars. 
There's also some great seating, some video games around the Cplex as well. Cplex is a massive area, so we're still in the Cplex. And there's lots to do here. Of course, there's an arcade if you want to. Bumper cars weren't enough. If you want to smash into Mario? You can do that as well. <laughs> Maybe Bowser. And you know, there's lots of activities all around, which is what you're about to see here as we kind of take a walk around the Cplex because the Royal Caribbean really put a lot of things to do here, including this Zone Zero. Zone Zero is probably one of the best things I've ever done on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is a virtual reality game, and I don't give too much away of this, but basically you put on a virtual reality suit, not like the sky pad where you're just putting on a helmet. This is a full suit, and you go into a virtual world and walk around, physically walk, not virtually walk. You're actually moving around. Again, I don't want to give away too much, but it is incredible, amazing. This does have an additional cost to it, but I'm going to tell you this right now. It's worth your money because I was absolutely blown away by trying this out myself. It was a group of four that go in. Got to make reservations. This does sell out incredibly quickly. So make sure you make reservations as soon as you get on board the ship because Zone Zero is really, really fun. I got to recommend it to just about anybody who wants to give it a try because it's just, I've never done anything remotely like this before. It felt like I was a video game character. All right, back out to the C-Plex itself. Yeah, we're still in the C-Plex. We haven't seen it all yet. There's still more in the C-Plex. That's what I love about this area. Just so much to check out. There's also an arcade up here at the C-Plex. So again, uh, you know, kids can run wild here or you can limit them to run wild, get a couple of minutes or a couple of tokens to enjoy while you're at the C-Plex. You, know, you can buy credits on the spot. Don't feel like you need to purchase arcade credits before the cruise, although you can do that via Royal Caribbean's website. There's also uh, Sassu's Mythical Quest, which is an interesting experience. I didn't actually try this myself, but basically you kind of go through here. This is like a full body video game where what you do impacts what the video game character does. You can do it yourself. Something fun to try and actually something on my next Odyssey of the Seas Cruise. I will try out myself. Of course, uh, you've got air hockey tables here, plenty of comfortable chairs to sit at. And most of these things do cost extra for you to do, but you don't have to do it. It's, I think honestly, something you might want to do on a sea day just for funsies, check these things out. But also for kids and teens who probably be doing the most of this type of activities, there's also places for them to hang out. The idea is they can hang out, you know, do a couple games, you know, socialize some and come back to it if you see fit. Now, something I absolutely love that Royal Caribbean has changed about the C-Plex is Playmakers this year. Yeah, the sports bar has been added to the C-Plex. So this is a massive space. The entire one side of the C-Plex is now Playmaker Sports Bar. And there is ample seating, lots of TVs. I mean, there's probably more TVs than people can actually sit over here. And the food is really good. We'll get to that in a moment. But it is a sports bar vibe, and this is a massive space. I've always liked Playmakers, the idea of it. I think here on Odyssey of the Seas, it might be the best implementation ever because of the views outside of the ocean, the fact that you're in the C-Plex, and the amount of space and the way they've designed the space to maximize it. There is lots to do here, and I really found myself coming here more often than I thought I would because of the great food and, of course, the TVs. I mean, basically any game that they can get, they'll show here. And by the way, if they don't get a game that you want, something else you could do because Odyssey of the Seas' internet is actually really good is, you know, maybe bring your iPad and stream your favorite game, assuming you have a service like MLB.TV or something like that where you can watch the game online. That might not be a terrible idea. Have some beers and enjoy your favorite team playing and uh, what I love about this also, you've got not only games you can watch, but how about games below people down there, bumper cars, volleyball, you can watch that and have a good time. There's also darts, and this is the owner's box. Check this area out. So technically, this is an area that you have to reserve ahead of time, but this is a private club area that you can go into, and it's basically like a man cave in a cruise ship. And as I mentioned, this area is a, usually available if you want to rent it out, so speak to them on board if you want to reserve that for your group. Love the nachos, the onion ring tower, the burgers, and the campfire cookie, which we're about to get to, is really good. But everything here is really great. Great finger foods, bar food typically. But Royal Caribbean, this is not like microwave stuff. Royal Caribbean did not take, you know, right, here's some stuff that we found in the freezer section, and we're going to reheat it. This is freshly made good food. I really recommend checking this out, especially the appetizers. The pile-on nachos are definitely worthwhile. And here is the best dessert in the whole wide world, which is the campfire cookie. It will change your life for the better. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. Suddenly I'm starving. This looks amazing. Yes, it is as good as it looks because it is amazing. It's a s'more. It's Royal Caribbean steak on a s'more. It's so good. It's actually served with a shot of milk. You got to check it out. So Playmakers is a must do if you're on Odyssey of the Seas. Whether you're a sports fan or not, just come up here for lunch. They're working for lunch and dinner. And it is just worth your time because they've done such a great job with this space. And I love the fact that it's in the C-Plex as well because it makes it the total package. I love it. 
All right, now that we've uh, seen all of the C plugs, let's head on out of here and check out the Windjammer. Yes, the buffet on Odyssey of the Seas. And of course, you'll be washing your hands as you come into the buffet. And like other Royal Caribbean ships, this is where you get all that food served to you by the crew members on here. Different stations for different kind of food. You've got salads, you've got meats, you've got pastas, you've got soups, and really everything in between. This is open for breakfast and lunch. Eventually, it will be open for dinner as well. Of course, this video coming out in 2021, so we saw some social distancing and it wasn't open for dinner, but eventually it will reopen for dinner as well. But the Windjammer is the clearinghouse for the most variety of foods you are going to find on Odyssey of the Seas, and they've just got to have something for everybody. Really, it's hard to come into the Windjammer and say, you know what? They didn't have anything I liked because there's just a wild variety of food to enjoy, and uh, make sure you check it all out. And the food does change daily, so it's going to be a different menu depending on the day you're there. And when you come here for Embarkation Day, on the first day of your cruise, the Windjammer is open. I mentioned the Slayer and Bistro is a great alternative to this as well, but a lot of guests come here because it's just the go-to spot to start your cruise because of the, again, how much variety of food you have in the Windjammer, and uh, I really love it. It's just, it's hard to go wrong because there's just so much good food in here. And uh, while you're at the Windjammer, there are also going to be complimentary drinks for you, coffee, water, some juices in the morning as well, flavored waters, they've got that for you. And another nice thing about the Windjammer is the great views outside of the ocean, lots of window seating, unlike some other older Royal Caribbean ships where the, only the window seating was really on the back of the ship. Here you have lots of space to enjoy and that means plenty of seating and plenty of great views while you enjoy your meal. And there's also a bakery in the Windjammer along with the bar there. So if you want to use your drink package or get a cup of coffee, you can get that as well. Espresso. If you have the coffee card or the Royal Refreshment Package, this is also where you can get your espresso, your lattes, all that. There's other places as well. We'll get to that a little later. But here you've got plenty of choice. Again, the Windjammer has got basically everything you're going to need to eat or drink in one spot and a lot of people really gravitate towards here because of the great variety you're going to find in the Windjammer. Next up is Coastal Kitchen. This is the suites only restaurant. So if you're staying in a grand suite or above, you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. If you're in a junior suite, you can come to Coastal Kitchen for dinner. And this is an alternative to the main dining room. There is no additional cost to dine in Coastal Kitchen and it has its own menu different than the main dining room and it changes every single day. What a lot of sweet guests love is that you have this private space just for you as a sweet guest. You must make reservations ahead of time. I mean, you could show up for a last minute walk-in reservation, but make sure you make reservations ahead of time. Also, a heat near the Windjammer is Teppanyaki. And you've got, of course, right here. Oh, look, the stowaway piano player. Oh my goodness, this is a great secret. If you can find him or her on Odyssey of the Seas, they just have these shows that appear, plays whatever songs you can think of. Really, really talented. Love stumbling upon this. It's a lot of fun. All right, back to the food. Sorry, dude. Uh, we got to check out Teppanyaki, which is the Izumi Teppanyaki. So this is a restaurant dedicated just to hibachi style dining. You actually see me eating right there. Oh man, I'm sure the food was really, really good. It was a lot of fun when you get to have hibachi with the group. And what really makes the teppanyaki experience so good is that view because you have amazing food and an amazing view. This is something I've never seen on any of their ships. Usually the sushi and hibachi are in the same restaurant, but on Odyssey of the Seas, they separated the two venues. We'll visit the sushi side in just a little bit. But here, this is just hibachi dining. There's lots of tables to be able to go to, make reservations ahead of time. This is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, especially restaurant on board Odyssey of the Seas. It is a must do. I'm telling you this right now. Yes, it is worth every penny of it. If you have the dining package, it is included, although there is a small surcharge for it. But I'm here to tell you, it is really, really good. And we came here with a group to enjoy the food and I just loved it. And the chefs are so good. They're so talented. So this is a show. If you've never done hibachi before, spoiler alert, you're going to see a lot of the tricks that are coming up here. But basically, they cook for you. And there's my big head right there and on your right. And you get to enjoy a show along with amazing food. So they cook right in front of you, deliver to you, piping hot. It's so good. And that fried rice. Listen, everything in this world is better when it's fried, including rice. It's so, so good. You have a choice of many different proteins, beef, steak. That is the same thing. Yes, I know. Chicken, <laughs> shrimp, scallops, lobster. It's so, so good. And of course, in addition to that, you also have options for sushi if you'd like to. There's miso soup, some appetizers. So you got a good variety of food to choose from when you're at Tapanyaki. But a lot of people ask me, Matt, what is one restaurant we should not miss? We're gonna do one special restaurant. We've got a big group. Where should we go? This is the place for you, Tapanyaki. I absolutely love it. Not thinking against the other specialty restaurants, but this is my favorite. 
because it is so good. And save room for dessert, the mochi ice cream is so worth it. It's amazing. Mochi ice cream is a Japanese specialty. It's, uh, I, I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's really good. Oh, and this is actually a great recommendation for a drink. It's called She's a Geisha. This is a special drink you can only get at Izumi. So either at the sushi or teppanyaki, order it if you got the drink package. It's a great choice if you like something a little on the fruity side. All right, let's uh, head on down a deck. And actually, we're going to run across one of the other secrets about Odyssey of the Seas. It's actually a see-through deck. Remember the one on the sky pad? See the ocean? Well, this one, my wife says this is the scariest one on the ship. You actually see down to like, I don't know, deck whatever that is, five. It's crazy, but it's a nice little thing to check out. Kids love this space as well. All right, we're back out on the pool deck again. And, uh, you know, after all that food we ate at Teppanyaki, we got to walk some of it off. But we're going to head on inside now. And you know what? It's time to treat yourself, as they say. And now it's the Vitality Spa, Salon, and Fitness Center. Yes, it's available on Odyssey of the Seas. So the salon is a, a spa and salon together. You can get your massages, your treatments, your acupuncture, your hair done, if you'd like, for men. You can also get a shave, a haircut, if you'd like. And it's a full-service spa. Like other Royal Caribbean ships, there's plenty of space. Actually, they've dedicated a big amount of space to the spa. Lots of different rooms, treatment rooms, and the salon offers a lot of treatments and things you can get done to again splurge you're on vacation after all and the nice thing about the spa by the way here's a little tip go there on embarkation day really at any time but usually most people do this on the first day of the cruise and ask for a tour say listen i just want to check it out there's no sales pressure really they're just going to show off the venue see what's available to you and then later on you can make a decision if you want to book something or not and it's just a wonderful beautiful space actually it smells really good too so it's worth doing that on embarkation day it's just kind of a Something to check out the ship while you're walking around and exploring. Again, there's no commitment, no cost to doing a spa tour. And this is actually the thermal spa room, which I'll tell you more about. Basically, you get a pass that allows you to sit on those stone loungers, which are heated. Yeah, talk about forgetting all your troubles. This is where you want to be. Not only that, you have the tropical rain shower, which is a great way to cool off. And you've got a sauna, although they call it something a little bit different on here, which we'll see in just a second. It's just this. The thermal spa is an access you can get by purchasing a pass per person. Only sell a limited amount during the cruise, so buy it on like on the first day, and you get to use this area as much as you want. But of course, the Vitality Spa is all about the treatments here, I think. Whether you're getting a stone massage, the hot sun massage, you're getting a Swedish massage, or really anything else in between, they have a lot of different treatment options for you. And if you're interested in doing something like this, you might want to book something before the cruise or once you get on board the ship. All right, now down to the fitness center. So in addition to the spa and the salon, there's also the Vitality Fitness Center, which is the gym, basically. And they have a lot of machines and free weights and things for you to do if you'd like to keep fit during your cruise. And the nice thing about the fitness center is it is largely complimentary. So there is no additional cost to go to the fitness center while on board Odyssey of the Sea. So you've got treadmills, ellipticals, the free weights, all included. The only thing that costs extra are fitness classes if you so choose to book them. But if you just want to come here and do your usual workout routine, totally complimentary for you to do so and enjoy that. And again, there's lots of machines. It's actually a very, very large gym. There is lots of machines. You know, it can definitely get busy here, especially on in the mornings during the early part of the cruise. But what's nice about this is you actually have a lot of machines that are facing out to the ocean. So you can kind of relax a little bit while you do your workout and enjoy the view. But there's a lot of different options for you. No matter what you're looking for in the fitness center, I think you're going to find And this is new equipment. This is really good stuff. So considering that there's no cost for fitness center and probably your gym at home costs money, well, there you go. But as I mentioned earlier, there is also a uh, fitness classes you can do like spin and a variety of other classes. You can sign up for them during your cruise and at least have an additional cost to them. You can also pre-reserve some of them via the cruise planner website and also maybe buy a package if you're gonna do more than one, it might actually save you a little bit of money if you go that route. Our next place we're gonna visit is the suite lounge, which can be accessed on the back of deck 13, and this is for Grand Suite guests or above. I'm sorry again, Junior Suite guests, but this is where you go. A uh, special area just for Grand Suite and above guests to enjoy. And this is an area where you can in get special seating for you, but also you've got in the evening hors d'oeuvres and complimentary alcoholic beverages as well. In the morning, you've got a coffee machine available and some light snacks served as well. And it's a special area reserved just for suite guests. 
And the views out the back really, I think, make it one of the best vantage points ever for any suite lounge when you look at those quantum class ships because they just absolutely are amazing. And as I mentioned, there's also some complimentary food to enjoy here. It'll be served to you. And there is a coffee maker to enjoy coffees during the day. And they serve you the coffees. And of course, the concierge themselves. So the concierge attendant is someone who can help you as a suite guest with any problems you might have. Basically, your own personal guest services to take advantage of. Okay, let's head down to deck 12 because what? Our kids are still here? Well, let's drop them off at Adventure Ocean. This is the area for kids, kids programming. You sign them up, drop them off, and there's supervised childcare on board Odyssey of the Seas. And Odyssey has the newest and latest Adventure Ocean that Royal Caribbean has doled out here. So it's got bright colors and a new motif and a new approach to Adventure Ocean. There are options for kids between six months and 17 years old. So lots to check out. First of all, you had Adventure Ocean Babies, which is for six to 36 months. This area does have additional costs to it. It's for babies who are six to 36 months. You can drop them off. There's uh, actually cribs in here, things to do. They can get fed in here, but this is worth the money right here. I used to bring my kids when they were this young. It was the best money we could spend because that way my wife and I can enjoy time at dinner while my kids could take a nap, sleep at night, go to bed you know, on a normal time and also get fed dinner. So it was a nice break from that. But if you move up to the older groups, the three to five year old Adventure Juniors and above, this is all complimentary now. And as I mentioned, Royal Caribbean breaks up Adventure Ocean based on ages. So the three to five year olds get to enjoy a space just for them with that programming that makes sense for them. There's no additional cost. You just have to be fully potty trained in order to go into Adventure Ocean and be at least three years old. And you've got lots of arts and crafts, games they can play. And Adventure Ocean is complimentary all the way up until 10 p.m. And then after 10 p.m., there is a extra cost to stay up as late as possibly 2 a.m. So in my opinion, it's worth paying the extra money to be able to stay out a little later for a show or some drinks at, at the bar, but you know, to each their own. And in addition, there's also space for six to 12 year olds. And this is the bulk of the Adventure Ocean space where you can find plenty of programming for the older children to enjoy. And just like the younger group, there is plenty to do, including arts and crafts and games and whatnot, but they just have a lot more space because at this age, they're gonna be a little more physical with what they're doing. And there's also be a little more group activities. So there's plenty of space for them to be able to separate out and do their own thing and be able to play together and meet friends. It's a lot of fun. There are video games there as well, as you can see, which I'm sure every kid watching now is like, what? Uh, the workshop is your arts and crafts dedicated area. So if they've got a project that they're gonna be doing in Adventure Ocean, they can come here rather than making a big mess back in the main room. And this is a dedicated area just for arts and crafts and whatnot. In addition to what you might find in Adventure Ocean programming, sometimes there are actually special events in which parents can come and do arts and crafts with their kids as well in Adventure Ocean. I mean, Adventure Ocean is a really impressive space and I love what the crew members do here with them. It's really worth your time. All right, let's head on down a deck or two. Where are we going next? Well, it is the staterooms, of course. Your stateroom is really on those middle decks between the pool deck and below <laughs> that all the way down. So if you're looking for your cabin, it's somewhere around here, I'm sure. Depending on which deck you're at, you can find your room. And this is, of course, an inside cabin that you can uh, see, but there's plenty of cabin configuration. So most likely, your cabin will be below the pool deck, but above, you know, deck two or three. So wherever this case may be, this is an inside room. This is what an inside cabin looks like. So there's no windows, but plenty of space. I'm actually surprised how much space Royal Caribbean has given and allocated to an inside room. It's not like you're doing the shuffle around there all the time because you can't walk. There's lots of space for a private bathroom. So it's really all in all not bad, especially considering that you're not spending that much time in your room, right? Because you're heading on out just like now we're in the elevator and we're going to go check out some other things. Ah, of course, before that, <laughs> here is the two bedroom grand suite, which you can also check out. And this is a, listen, the nice thing about the grand suite is, well, in addition to all those benefits we talked about earlier with the suite lounge and the suite deck, you also get just a beautiful area to enjoy and call your own for the week while you're on board Odyssey of the Seas. This is actually the, the second bedroom. This is the minor bedroom, and this is the master bedroom to enjoy two bathrooms, two bedrooms, great for families as well. If you're a family of four or more and you're looking for an alternative to a suite that's a little more affordable, try looking at two connecting cabins. Oftentimes that's much less expensive and you actually get a fair amount of space as well. Still, so you get two bathrooms, so might be a good alternative. But the two-bedroom grand suite and a lot of these suites in general are just really nice to be in because they're just so pretty and fun to enjoy. All right, we're heading down to deck three and we're gonna check out Casino Royale, which is where you can hopefully win a lot of money, but maybe lose some money as well. But the casino on Odyssey of the Seas is quite large and you've got plenty of games to enjoy, whether it is slots, 
You've got poker. You've got blackjack. Plenty to enjoy. Check out the casino if you'd like. And, of course, you also have the dining room. The dining room on Odyssey of the Seas is different because it's a big dining room. It's a main dining room. On some of the other quantum-class ships, the dining room is separated into separate smaller rooms. But here you've got a traditional main dining room. And I have to say, it is absolutely beautiful inside because there is just a lot to enjoy. I love the way they've created colors and this wall. I don't know what this thing is, but it's amazing. I love the visuals you've got in here. And oh yes, yeah, amazing food as well. But the main dining room actually opens up to deck five above and you have this uh, beautiful chandelier right in the middle of the main dining room. And it is just, I, you gotta bring your camera while you're eating because it's really, really nice in here. So if you're eating the main dining room, it's complimentary. There's two choices for the dining room. You have my time dining and traditional. Traditional is pretty simple. You have a set time, whether it's early or late. You come every day to the dining room. You have the same table, the same wait staff, and the same table mates every night of your cruise. The menu changes every day of the cruise, but the table assignment and your waiters stay the same. The alternative is you could go for my time dining, which is kind of like going to a restaurant on land. Basically, you can make a reservation ahead of time, or you can just simply show up and get the first available table for you. You may have to wait, but you know, it's just depends on how things are. The main dining room is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's only open for lunch on sea days, by the way, but it is open for breakfast and dinner every day of the cruise. And there is some really good food here. It's all complimentary, might I add. And the nice thing about the main dining room is that it is a really a staple of the cruise experience. I personally prefer traditional dining because I just like having the same wait staff because in my time, I failed to mention earlier, you're actually gonna get different waiters each time you dine there. So keep that in mind when you're going there for dinner, if that really factors in your decision or not. All right, well, we're gonna head up to deck four next. I have on one of these stairwells. And now we're on the Royal Esplanade. So the Royal Esplanade is what basically Royal Caribbean calls the area that is otherwise known as the Royal Promenade on other ships. So it's this kind of windy shopping dining district you find on Odyssey of the Seas. And they've got a lot of favorites you might see in other Royal Caribbean ships, including Boleros, which is the Latin themed bar on the Royal Esplanade. And you get live music, especially at night. This is definitely the place to go if you like dancing. And you want the kind of music that's going to get you out of your seat or at least tapping your knee, this is a good spot for it. And there's also some views during the daytime of the ocean around you. So if you're looking for a quiet space, you know, there's actually some really comfortable seats in the back of Polaris. It's a really large space as well. I kind of like going in the back there because you get to hear the music but still be able to talk amongst yourselves while you're there. And of course, you have guest services here as well. Guest services is a very important spot if you have a problem on board the ship. They'll solve it for you no matter what's going on there, whether you have a billing issue, you want to check on something, you have a question. Guest service is always a good spot to go to, and they're open 24 hours a day to handle any needs you may have. Also on the Royal Esplanade is the logo shop. So if you want to get something Royal Caribbean themed, something with a Royal Caribbean logo on it, this is the place to go. It's kind of the general store where you'll find most of the souvenirs that you might want to purchase and bring back home, whether it's a cup, sweater, t-shirt, backpack, toy, <laughs> Really, anything they can stick a Royal Caribbean logo on, this is where you're going to find it. And it's actually some pretty good stuff. It used to be back in the day, you'd find just some you know generic shirts and whatnot, but they've been pretty creative with some of the new Odyssey of the Seas themed and just Royal Caribbean themed merchandise. And of course, what you're seeing here in this video may be different by the time you get on board Odyssey of the Seas, but there's a lot of great clothing in here, great souvenirs. And if you have an onboard credit to spend, this is a great spot to use it on because there's a lot of cool knickknacks and souvenirs either for yourself or for friends back home and you can purchase it all here at the logo store also you've got port merchants so if you have uh, maybe some friends who are doing some favors for you while you're on a cruise well bring them back instead of that odyssey of the sea shirt perhaps a bottle of liquor or wine may be <laughs> more beneficial for them the port merchants you can purchase uh, wine liquors all duty free by the way including some other uh, toiletries and things you may need as well and also on the real Esplanade is Starbucks. Yes, this is a Starbucks kiosk where you can order real Starbucks drinks. You get your PSL and your skinny macchiatos and anything else you prefer at Starbucks. It's all available for you. The nice thing about Starbucks, by the way, is if you have a Starbucks card, yes, you can use the card to pay for drinks. You can earn rewards for your purchases here. You just can't redeem your rewards here. So if you have a bunch of stars saved up, you can't redeem them here, but you can still use your Starbucks card to pay for drinks here. By the way, drinks purchased at Starbucks, all the stuff, in fact, food or drinks is not included with any drink or dining package that Royal Caribbean offers. So this is all on you if you choose to dine or drink, I should say, at Starbucks. Meanwhile, you have Cafe Promenade if you're looking for something that is included with your drink package. Well, 
You've got coffees here. These coffees, by the way, are complimentary. You're seeing as well as teas, but you can also get some lattes if you'd like as well. And the nice thing about Cafe Promenade, it's great for a little snack. You know, you get a sandwich and on your way. But probably the best place for a snack is next door at Sorrento's. Yes, a standalone pizza area where you can get plenty of pizzas pretty much most of the day and definitely late at night. Cheese, pepperoni, veggie, primavera, really everything in between. It's a great spot for a snack and check out Sorrento's. Always a good treat and it's a really big space. Lots of seating as well. And you also find some Coca-Cola freestyle machines, which you can use if you have a drink package and those are uh, optional for you to enjoy. All right, back out to the Esplanade and really just like a real prominent on other ships, this is kind of a hub of activity. You're gonna find sales, you're gonna find people mingling, there's bars to do, but it's really just this kind of thoroughfare, if you will, to get you around. And this is the, the heartbeat of the ship on board because there's just lots going on here on the Royal Esplanade. And it really extends all the way back from the main dining room going all the way forward, as you'll see in a little bit as we get to the theater. But before that, there's still more to see in the Esplanade, including the Regalia Jewelry Store. If you wanna have some fine jewelry purchases, this is the place to go for that. And one of my favorite places on board the ship, the Crown and Compass Pub. If you're looking for a drink on board, and some live music every evening, this is the place to go. The pub is kind of this English uh, style pub. And hey, look, there I am again, enjoying some drinks. So <laughs> practicing what I preach here, ladies and gentlemen. This is your classic bar scene, live music in the evening, your favorite drinks, songs you can sing along to. Absolutely love it. And there's actually a lot of great seating as well in the pub. It's actually a very large area of lengthwise that is and great service. So check it out if you're ever here looking for songs to sing along to and drinks to enjoy while you do so. The pub is the way to go. And by the way, the pub also offers food. Yeah, in fact, the food offered at the pub does cost extra and it's not included with your dining packages. But if you're interested, you can get some food here as well along with your drinks. I've also got some other shops on board the Royal Esplanade. You've got the Invictica store. You've got the fine watch store from Regalia and some clothing stores as well at the collection. So, you know, if you're looking to do some shopping, if that onboard credit is burning a hole in your pocket or you'd like to bring something back home with you, this is a spot for you as well. But of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the music hall, which is one of the signature areas on any quantum class ship. This is a two-story music venue where you've got live bands playing and it's kind of this club meets live music hall vibe i don't know how it's better to explain it but it's a really fun spot where you'll get live music dancing and also that club experience as well whether it's a dj or just they try to put as much live music here as possible but it is a wonderful space and at nighttime it's hard to beat because it's just kind of a big party over here if you're looking for probably the biggest party on board the ship it's probably in the music hall because there's just always something going on and they try to have the hottest vibe, I think, when it comes to the music hall. All right, back out of the music hall. Now that we can hear ourselves again, we have some more shopping to enjoy. Solaria Beauty, if you want to pick up some makeup and perfume and whatnot. And you also have the unboxed store. Also, this is something most people don't know about, actually. This is the self-service kiosk machines where you can get special things, you know, toiletries and whatnot any time of the day. So if you ever forget any of these important things like sunscreen or you get a sunburn, you need some aloe, this is the place to go for you as well. But next up, we're gonna head over towards the Royal Theater on the front of the ship. We've reached the end of the Royal Esplanade, and now it's time to check out the Royal Theater. And the theater is two stories, and this is where you're gonna find live musical entertainment on board the Odyssey of the Seas. You've got different performances, maybe a comedian, maybe a live show, something in between, who knows? In fact, the signature show on Odyssey of the Sea is something called Showgirl Past, Present, and Future, which celebrates the live dancing motif that showgirls have been known for. And it's actually a lot of energy in this show, very popular, and a really interesting take on this musical number. It's uh, definitely a show you're going to want to check out while you're on board Odyssey of the Seas. And when you're in the Royal Theater, it's complimentary to check out these shows. If you are a Diamond member or above in Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society, then you can access the Diamond Lounge, which is right by the Royal Theater. And the Diamond Lounge is available for Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle Club guests. And kind of like the Sweet Lounge, this is a reserved area just for the top tier Crown and Anchor Society members. And in the evening, you also have complimentary drink service here as well. And just like the Sweet Lounge as well, there's a coffee machine and hors d'oeuvres served during the evening and a light breakfast and snacks for lunch in the Diamond Lounge. In addition, you're also gonna find the Diamond Concierge. She's behind the computer over there, I promise. And she can also help answer some questions or issues you may have. She's a great resource, or he could be a great resource as well. 
gonna set up one more deck and now we're gonna check out the photo gallery on Odyssey of the Seas. The photo gallery is where you can pick up any of those photos that you've taken with Royal Caribbean's photographers, as well as pick up some equipment if you forgot your camera or need an extra memory card. But I think most people come here to get those photos that they've taken on board the ship, whether you took it on the Esplanade or you took it in the pool or you took it right off the ship on the dock. Anytime a Royal Caribbean photographer takes your photo, you can purchase the photos here as well as some accessories and picture frames. So that way you can bring it back and you can also just go here and just check out what your photos look like. There's no obligation to do so. Just swipe your CPAS card and you're good to go to check it out at the photo gallery. And right next to the photo gallery is the Schooner Bar, the classic Royal Caribbean bar area where you've got live piano music. You've got usually a trivia and other activities here throughout the day as well. And a great bar and wonderful drinks to check out. So I need to give you guys a drink recommendation. I've been doing that in the other bars. So for this one, I'm going to recommend you check out the Tequila Sunrise. Classic drink. Check it out. It's a crowd pleaser for sure. And in the evening, you're also going to find live piano music, whereas in the pub, they have a guitarist. In the Schooner Bar, you have the piano player. And again, more songs you can sing along to have a drink while you're doing so. Schooner Bar is the place for that. And of course, next door to the Schooner Bar is Chops Grill, the signature steakhouse on Royal Caribbean's cruise ships. So if you're looking for filet mignon or you're looking for a ribeye, this is the place for you. It's a classic dining experience at any Royal Caribbean cruise ship, including Odyssey of the Seas. And a lot of people just love it because it's, it's hard to ever go wrong with steak. In addition, in the back of Chops Grill, you're gonna find the chef's table. So the chef's table is a curated dining experience. It lasts a couple of hours and they prepare the meal just for you and your group and the chef does it specifically for your group. It's a really intimate dining experience. You might wanna check out at least once in your career of going on Royal Caribbean cruises. And here is the Izumi Sushi. So earlier we had the teppanyaki, which was the hibachi dining, but this is where you go to get the sushi only. So if you wanna get sushi rolls, nigiri, you wanna get maki rolls, hand rolls, it is all here at Izumi Sushi, and I love this place. I mean, it's, for me, it's hard, for, hard to go wrong with sushi as well. So for sushi fans, this is a spot for you. Right next to Izumi is the Bionic Bar. This is where robots can make your drinks for you. Seriously, the Bionic Bar allows you to order drinks, and instead of a bartender making it, two robots actually make it for you. The way it works is you scan your CPAS card, you order a drink, and whatever drink you order, you can customize the way you want, and the robots then actually craft the cocktail. This is a concept that's been on a number of different ships, and while this may not be my favorite bar to go to to get a drink at any given time, it is still really a cool thing to see if you've never seen it done before. I mean, video doesn't do it justice. You've got to see it in person, and it's kind of cool when you get your favorite drink made by a robot. It's pretty neat, and the only limitation is really they can't make any frozen drinks for you, but they have a pretty good selection of drinks to do, and it's kind of a fun thing to do, and yes, your drink package does work. Right next door is the Voom desk. If you have any issues with your internet package, alongside it is the Shore Excursion desk, where you can purchase Shore Excursions, ask questions about anything you've got coming up. If you're curious for some advice about what to book or just have some general questions, this is a place to do it. They also have these iPads here that you can purchase excursions on directly. All you do is put your CPAS card on there, purchase them, and you're good to go. And obviously, if you have any issues, Shore Excursion desk can help you out as well. Of course, this is also a great view of the Royal Esplanade, and right across the way, the Wonderland Specialty Restaurant. Wonderland is loosely based on the Alice in Wonderland tales, and it is a different kind of specialty restaurant. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a lot more show than just the food there. The entertainment value that you get at Wonderland is just as important as the food that's getting served. Now, all of it looks weird. Not only the restaurant, but the food you're going to get, the menu items, they all sound weird, but in truth, they're actually better than they sound, and they taste pretty darn good, actually. And you can see here, we enjoyed a meal at Wonderland while we were on Odyssey of the Seas. It's a fun little meal to enjoy. I mean, it's a good thing for group and something different. That's something also that's nice about Wonderland. So maybe give it a try at least once, see what you think of it. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Wonderland. So of course, the Royal Esplanade has a lot going on if you haven't noticed already. Just so many things to check out and see. And when all else fails, it's a good place to just hang out and see what's happening here. There's different sales in the daytime, different promotions, different activities, you never know. But of course, it wouldn't be a Royal Caribbean ship unless there was a promenade deck to enjoy as well. And going out to the promenade deck, you get great views of the ocean. You can walk around it. And it is a wonderful little place for a sea day walk, as you were. Get good views of the ocean, the ocean breeze passing you by. And it's always nice to be able to take a little walk out here. I like doing this in the evening after dinner and kind of walk off some of those calories, or at least I tell myself that's the excuse anyway. But with the evening breeze, it can be really comfortable out here to enjoy. So make sure you check out the promenade deck as well. 
On Odyssey of the Seas, there's less views from the Promenade deck than you might find on other Royal Caribbean ships, but there's still plenty of places you can catch great views of the ocean. And I love that they put more chairs out here as well. So if you're looking for something also quieter in order to read a book than maybe the pool deck, this is the place to go on sea days because there's no music here. There's barely any people here in the daytime, quite frankly. So good spot. Next up is the Via. And the Via is where you go when you're exiting the Royal Esplanade and on your way to the back of the ship. The Via is just really a passageway, but they've decorated very beautifully. It's actually a great place for your Instagram photos and taking selfies. So while it is just a place to pass through, I think it's actually very pretty and you should stop and at least admire some of the artwork that they have here. Because of course, all Royal Cream ships have a ton of wonderful art on boarded ships. There's also a few shops in the Via as well. You'll find some jewelry stores primarily where you can get watches and other fine jewelry. So check it out while you're there. And one of my favorite, if not my favorite, especially restaurant on board Odyssey of the Seas is Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar. This is a completely new theme or update to the Giovanni's restaurant that you may have found on other Royal Caribbean ships. This is Italian food. It's classic Italian. It's got a lot of good choices on here, including pizza. They actually have a full pizza oven here to cook pizzas fresh. In addition to that, you've got some great pastas they make every single day. And on top of all of that, there's a wine bar, which we'll get to in just a minute. But in the first place, let's take a look at Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, especially restaurant, extra cost to dine here. It is really, really good. What I really like about Giovanni's table is the updated menu. There's so many good choices that have been completely recreated. As you can see, I'm actually ordering my food right there, probably saying, give me one of everything because it is worth getting one of everything. The appetizers, the entrees, there are so many compelling choices on the menu. Here's some of the appetizers that we had while at Giovanni's Italian Kitchen. I can tell you that Every single one was better than the next one that came here. This is a must try. And I got to tell you that everything is just really good. It's as good as it sounds, truly. And so Giovanni's Telling Kitchen is a great choice if you're looking for a great night out for a specialty dining restaurant. And also I mentioned there are pizzas that are made here. There's a couple different varieties. The seven cheese pizza is not to be missed, but if you're feeling adventurous, go for that as well. And save room for dessert as always. I feel like every specialty restaurant I've got to say that for, but it is absolutely true when it comes to Giovanni's Telling Kitchen. If you recall earlier in the video, we had that great chandelier down in the main dining room. And something I really like about Odyssey of the Seas is this is the top of the chandelier and allows you to peer into the dining room. And it's kind of an interesting take on the dining experience because it helps kind of bring the whole area together. There's better flow to it. And it's nice that they've arranged it in that way. But next door to Giovanni's Italian Kitchen is Giovanni's Wine Bar, which serves, as you might imagine, wine. And there's more than just wine here, actually. You can order off the Giovanni's Italian Kitchen menu. They actually have a couple items that you can't actually get at the restaurant. How cool is that? So if you're looking for a quick bite, you want to grab something to eat with your wine, or perhaps Giovanni's Italian Kitchen is completely booked for the evening, you can go to the wine bar and offer pretty much most, not all, but most of the food from the restaurant and enjoy it at the wine bar. Now, the wine bar is not included with specialty dining packages, unlike the restaurant, which is included with specialty dining packages, but that may change. But in the meantime, it's a great spot again for maybe just a quick bite to eat along with your wine. Perhaps you want to have an antipasti platter with your wine. You can do that as well, or even order a full meal here, depending on what you prefer and what's going on with the restaurant. And it's a nice little option that most people don't even know you can do. And I love that they've changed this venue, which used to be vintages on other quantum class ships and made it a little more interesting. And the fact that they've added good food is wonderful as well. You'll also find the art gallery nearby as well. If you're interested in bidding for some art later on in the cruise, there'll be some art auctions during your sailing. And this is where you can preview some of the art for later on. And of course, nearby, you'll also find Next Cruise, which is really important because Next Cruise is where you can book your next Royal Caribbean cruise. Basically, if you're on board Odyssey of the Seas, say, you know what, this is so much fun, let's do it again. Then stop by Next Cruise and book another cruise. By booking a cruise on board, you'll actually get free onboard credit for booking that cruise. Now, if you're watching this video at home, that's fantastic, but don't wait to book your cruise on board. Book it now with a good travel agent. I think next cruise is really good. If you're sitting on the ship and saying, wow, this is fantastic, let's book another cruise, then bam, head down to next cruise and take advantage of that because I wouldn't want the price to change by the time you get it back on board the ship. And after you book another cruise, you might be getting a little hungry again. So it's time for Cafe at 270, which is a great place to go for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between. It's also a great spot for coffee. This is essentially like Park Cafe on the Oasis class ships. And you've got a good variety of food here during your meals. You're going to find bagels. You're going to find burritos. You're going to find salads to eat and espressos, lattes, and all of this included with your drink package. And a lot of people, again, have no idea this exists. It's all the way in the back of the ship. And so people either just don't walk over here until later in the cruise or whatever, whatever the excuse may be. But this is a great spot for grab and go, especially 
on a day in which you're about to leave the ship to go on a shore excursion. Stopping here to grab something quickly is the name of the game of Cafe at 270. They have a pretty good selection of foods. And I think for most folks who are looking to grab something quick, this is a good alternative to going up to the Windjammer or some other venues that require more of a sit down experience or just simply less crowded altogether. And last but not least, we have the PS de Resistance of Odyssey of the Season, that is 270. This is an amazing venue on the back of the ship, and it's called 270 because it offers a 270 degree view of the back of the ship. This is where you're gonna find some fantastic shows on board, different entertainment. The evening entertainment really stands out here, but it's a pretty large venue, and I like that it's a little eclectic in its design. It's not a traditional kind of theater, but they've designed it to have all sorts of seating all around on two different decks and the views out the back. Come here in the daytime if you've got a book to read, if you're looking for catch up on some work or just simply admire the view. It's really nice. There are also tables towards the area of Cafe 270 if you want to bring your food from the cafe over here and eat it. You've got a great view of the wake behind you. And again, the seating is really incredible where you can find near 270. There's just a lot of different seating, again, on two different decks. If you're looking for the best view, check out the second floor middle section. I think it's the best view of the shows. There's also the boardroom and the library. These are general space areas. The library is less books and more just an area to sit and read quietly. And the boardroom, I have no idea. I think it's more of a conference center kind of thing. It was locked when I was there, so I'll take your word for somebody else if they've ever been in there. And of course, great views of the ocean behind you. Check that out. Really nice. And yes, there is a bar back here at 270. Oh, it's a bar, so I got to give you a drink recommendation, huh? How about a classic margarita? Tell them you want it made, you know, extra special, perhaps specify the tequila. Good choice. All right, here is the book. This is the signature show on Odyssey of the Seas. The book is a Royal Green production show in which it's separated by chapters, if you will. Essentially, if I'm understanding the story correctly, and it's a very loose story, the main protagonist is kind of like looking through some books and going through different chapters of, I don't know what, but different things happen in different chapters. That's all I will say but it's pretty darn cool. And also after the book, you might find some other things in here like the 70s disco party and other events in the evening. It's a fun spot. I really like 270 because it's so unique, so different than any other places on a Royal Caribbean ship. So there you have it. A look at Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel because we will have more ship tour videos for you and hit that notification icon. That's a little bell icon. So that way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.